Today's online lesson is going to reflect a concept known as gross domestic product. Gross domestic product, or GDP, is found in our textbook in Chapter 23, uh, Measuring a Nation's Income. If you were to ask me, what is your standard of living? In other words, like, what kind of lifestyle do you have? What are some of the things you can buy, some of the uh, places you can go, some of the things that you can afford? You might ask me, how much do you get paid? This would be a good indication of my lifestyle, my standard of living, and the things that I can afford. So in the year 2013, the amount I get paid is right around 65000 per year. Now this, of course, would be more like a microeconomics question because it reflects me individually, a smaller part of the overall economy. But let's translate this to a macro question. Let's say we wanted to know how much the United States gets paid in a year. Well, when we look at the total gross domestic product in the United States, it's around $15.68 trillion. In other words, this is how much the whole United States paycheck is or was in 2012. So if we wanted to know what kind of lifestyle people in the United States had, we may look to this number. You'll find out later that there's an even more important number known as per capita GDP. But let's just start off looking at total GDP. So. Again, a micro question would be, how much does Coach L make in a year? A macro level question would be, how much does the entire United States get paid per year? So chapter 23 is titled, Measuring a Nation's Income. When we look at macroeconomics, and this is the focus of our course, we study big picture things, the economy as a whole. We study things like the Federal Reserve and the federal government. After all, those are the two major players in the macro economy. We study things like inflation, unemployment, economic growth, and we look at other indicators to show us what and how the economy is doing at any given time. So the first subject that we're going to study in relation to macroeconomics is a concept known as GDP. GDP is the total market value of all final goods and services produced within a country's border in a given period of time. If you look at our graph here, our bar chart, we can see that the United States by far is the biggest economy in the entire world. You've probably heard a lot about China as an emerging nation, but even China with their massive economy still dwarfs in comparison to the United States. The United States is a massive economy. When we look at GDP, we can look at this concept from either an income perspective or an expenditures perspective. When I say income or expenditure, what I mean is we can look at GDP as the nation's total income, the total paycheck of a nation, or we can look at it as all of the things that we have produced and people have consumed or spent their money on. Think about it. For one person to receive income, another person would have had to spend. So in this analysis, these two figures, these two measurements are essentially the same. Total income is going to equal total spending. Once again, all the spending this done in the economy is also the total income in the economy. Now, there are fundamentally four components of GDP. When we look at GDP, it can be broken down into one of four components. And the variable on the PowerPoint shows you these four components. GDP is equal to C plus I plus G plus NX. Okay, so what does the C stand for? The C stands for consumption. That's all the spending done in the economy by people like you and I, uh, consumers. So we go to McDonald's and buy a value meal, that's consumption spending. The I is investment. Investment spending represents all the spending done by businesses, by firms in the economy. So Apple opens up a store in St. John's Town Center, this is investment spending. G represents government spending. Our government is a major player in the economy and spends just like consumers do. And finally, NX. NX stands for net exports. Net exports represents the total amount of stuff that we sell to other countries minus the total amount of stuff that we buy from other countries, or exports minus imports. Now let's look a little more closely at each one of these variables. Consumption spending. Consumption spending, again, is all the spending done by households or consumers. When we look at our economy here in the United States, 70% of our total income earned, or GDP, total amount of things that are produced and then purchased, are based on us, consumers. That's a massive part of the economy. 
So sometimes people say, as the consumer goes, so does the economy. Investment spending. Spending done by firms and businesses. This accounts for 15% of GDP. Government spending. Government spending accounts for 20% of GDP. And you might be looking at these numbers and saying, no, wait a second, Coach L, this is 105%. How is that possible? It's possible because we, as an economy, actually buy more stuff from other countries than we sell to other countries, which means the total amount of exports, the gross revenue generated by the things we sell to other countries is less than the total amount of stuff that we buy from other countries, which makes this number currently negative. So net exports is a negative and takes away from GDP. Now, let's look a little more closely at GDP. GDP's definition is the total market value of all final goods and services produced in a nation's borders in a given period of time. The first part of the definition, the total market value. Market dollar value, what does that mean? The market dollar value is essentially the price of stuff. We've already indicated this when we studied supply and demand, that price is a, is a way for us to create a value system. I know how much something is worth based on some, how much something costs. Now, I'm not talking about intrinsic value, sentimental value. I'm talking about the consumption level of products. So if something is $2.99, $4.99, a penny, a dollar, $50,000, then I know what that value is in our economy. If I look at this Apple and then I look at this Ford, I know that there's a difference between these two products as it relates to value and price. The second part of the definition of all. All items produced in the economy and sold in legal markets are accounted towards gross domestic product. Anything that is sold legally on commercial markets is part of GDP. Again, the total market value, the price, the cost of all, everything that's sold legally. The third part of the definition, final. See, when we look at gross domestic product, one way that we analyze it is based on the things that are actually sold as a final product in the economy. You can see right here we have a very nice looking cheeseburger and over here we have cattle. See when McDonald's produces this cheeseburger they need a natural resource from the land by way of livestock. So we don't want to count the sale of this meat to McDonald's then count it again when it's sold in this cheeseburger. That would be double counting and it would skew the numbers. It would look like we were generating way more sales than we actually were. So what we do is we just disregard the sale of this meat until it is sold in the final form of this burger. So the cheeseburger would be counted or included, that's the output. The input, the cow parts, as well as the tomatoes and the onions and pickle and all the other parts are excluded. Again, the final product is what we count. The next part of GDP's definition, both goods and services. If you recall from earlier in the year, we studied the difference between goods and services. And we said that goods are tangible, that is we can touch them, services are intangible. We count both the hair product, the thing that we can touch, and the haircut, the thing that we cannot. GDP also looks at things that are currently produced, that is things that are brand new items. It disregards the sale of things that have already been sold at previous times. Now let's say I have two cars on a car lot. I have a brand new Audi and I have a used Audi. Both of these cars are sold. Let's assume that this Audi was originally sold in 1984 and it's being sold as a used good. The only sale that would count towards this year's GDP is the 2013 Audi. So the old Audi, the used Audi, wouldn't count because it's already counted one time towards GDP and of course that represents the GDP for that year. We don't want to add it again to this year, that would be double counting again and would skew measurement. What would count for both of these products being sold is any commission made this year by a car dealer, meaning when they sell the old Audi and the new Audi, the dealer is going to get a little bit of cut, a little profit, the commission for the sale of this, and that would count towards GDP. Anyway, so fundamentally, a new car would count towards GDP, whereas a used car would not. GDP also only takes into account things that we sell here in the United States. It's gross or total domestic, domestic meaning within our borders. So it only measures the production of products that we sell here in the United States, not companies that are American companies overseas. For instance, if I want to go to Disney World, I can go down here to Orlando and go to Disney World. Or I can fly to Japan and go to Tokyo Disneyland. When I go to the Japanese version of Disney World, that 
stuff that I buy, the tickets, the drinks, the toys, whatever, are going to count towards Japan's GDP, not towards the United States' GDP. It's employing Japanese workers, not American workers, and adding towards that nation's GDP. So, a Japanese company, on the other hand, in the United States, selling products such as Mazda, Nissan, Toyota, some of these Japanese car dealerships would count towards the United States GDP because they employ American workers and add towards our economy, which, of course, by logic would then exclude an American company in Japan. GDP also is measured over intervals. As a matter of fact, GDP is measured quarterly. So we have 12 months in our fiscal year. Every three months, GDP is measured to give an analysis of how the economy is doing at any given time. You can see here that in 2008, when GDP fell consecutively for two periods and was in the negative, that we were in our recession. So GDP is measured at a yearly rate, quarterly rate, or over the course of time. We can look at it historically or at these marginal intervals. Okay, so we've talked about what's included in GDP. Let's talk about what's excluded. I mentioned before that intermediate products are not counted towards GDP. An intermediate product is an input used to produce a final good and service. So here we have an automobile, and you can see lots of internal products that are part of this car. And you can see that you know we have steering wheel and glass and wheels. Well, these things are not counted towards GDP once and then counted again when it's sold in its final version of the product. We just take into account the sale of the final good. So again, intermediate products are not counted towards GDP, only the final good and service, and this excludes double counting. Now, if we looked at this car, we see that there are four tires that come with the car. Those are not counted as final goods. They're part of the car sale. However, let's say you drive off the dealership lot and you blow a tire. Well, you need to replace that tire. And you buy a brand new tire for your brand new car. Well, that would count towards GDP. Because that is a new sale with a new product that is newly produced that's adding to our economy's GDP. When I first moved to Georgia, I noticed that at the beginning of every month there was a lot of garage sales going on. Well, these yard sales are selling things that have typically already been sold one time. So again, we exclude what we call secondhand sales because these products have already been counted once and to count them again would be double counting and skew the numbers. We don't want to do that. If you buy a Beatles album that was produced in the 1960s, well, that might be a cool find at the garage sale. It wouldn't count towards this year's GDP because it was already counted once. You know that there's a whole online market for the sale of eBay. So a lot of times students say, well, what if somebody sells me something on eBay? And I ask them, is it a new product or a used product? See, some people run their business on eBay. And if that's the case and they're selling brand new products in the market, well, then that would count towards GDP. But a used product would not. Again, the exclusion of secondhand sales from GDP. Okay, so about a month ago, my internet went out. My phone line went out and my TV went out. So I called Comcast and they said they couldn't get somebody out for three or four days. Well, that isn't going to work for me because I like to watch TV, I like to go on the internet, and I like to talk on the phone. So I drove down the street to one of my neighbor's houses that I know works for Comcast, and I said, would you come over and look at my Comcast because I can't seem to get connection. So he came over to the house and basically opened up our outside cable box, and Comcast had unplugged my cable box. So he informed me that a lot of times Comcast does this if people don't pay their bills. Well, I pay my bills. So I asked him, why would they do that? And he said, well, who knows? They might have the wrong address, whatever. So he promptly plugged the cable back in, and voila, I had cable, internet, and TV again. So I paid the guy for coming over in his trouble. I gave him 40 bucks. Now, around tax time, is this guy going to account for this $40 as part of his personal income? Probably not. The truth of the matter is that every day, there are many transactions that go unrecorded. And when they go unrecorded, they are part of what we call non-market transactions or off the books. You may have heard the term under the table. Okay, so non-market transactions would be something like you doing a babysitting job and getting paid $10 an hour. You're probably not going to claim that on your taxes. Is this in the most literal sense illegal? Yes, it is. But we know that it happens. Another thing that GDP doesn't count is a service that I provide for myself. For instance, I like to do my own lawn. For instance, mowing my own yard. I personally like to mow my own yard. I like to do my own yard work. 
gives me a chance to get outside, I get some exercise, I feel good about myself. Anyway, I'm not gonna call the Internal Revenue Service and tell them that, hey, today I performed a service, I didn't charge myself, but I performed the service of mowing my yard, and I wanted to make sure that you accounted for this in the measurement of GDP. Not gonna do that. Whether it's mowing my own lawn or changing a tire, these things are not counted towards GDP, they're excluded. Economists also don't like the black market. And the black market represents anything that is sold illegally, things like drugs or gambling where it's illegal. So economists don't take into account the black market, even though it does have a major impact on our economy. The final thing that doesn't count towards GDP is what we call transfer payments. Transfer payments are when we have a redistribution of money from one group to another. This is typically talked about when we look at entitlement programs such as welfare, unemployment, Social Security, or any type of transfer payment that would go from one party to the, to the next. Also, in terms of transfer payments, we also don't include the sale of stocks and bonds because these are counted as financial investments and don't count as actual sale of anything. However, the commission made by a stockbroker or a mortgage broker or anybody that sells a, a stock or a bond or some kind of financial asset does count towards GDP. Okay, to sum it up, what is included in GDP? Consumer spending, business spending, government spending, foreign spending. What is excluded? Intermediate products, black market products, doing your own lawn or off the market transactions, cash transfers, and secondhand sales. We'll talk more about this in class. You can go ahead and proceed to your video quiz on GDP.